A Terminator squad has many ways of entering the battlefield. The most common being riding among land raiders and Spartan assault tanks, and the other more elusive manner is teleportation. A risky business. Librarian Taran said once asked, why not both? Conducting a lightning fast raid on the Imperial Fists by guiding a land raider filled with Terminators through the warp via a teleportation pad. The Wrath's Ruin is that land raider, an ancient beast gifted to the 16th Legion before they even earned their name. Hi there, my name's Bando, and this is the showcase part two of My Sons of Horus. This is, first up, my Mark II Land Raider, uh, which was uh, gifted to me, uh, the, the sponsors at least were gifted to me by Mr. Lee's Painting, and they are 3D printed. And this is a kit bash of the standard plastic Mark II Land Raider. Um, I like to call it a Mark II A, because it's not quite a Mark II B, which was a Forge World kit, um, but it is more or less the same vehicle. And uh, it's a lovely profile for a vehicle. I love this look of Land Raider. I think this is one of the most iconic pieces of um, sort of Space Marine armor. And um, I had a lot of fun working with it. The resin parts, not so much fun, but um, they were free, more or less. So it was, uh, it was definitely worth it. So what have I done to this vehicle? Well, I had to remove several parts from the side and smooth them down to fit the sponsons. I've added uh, parts from the Horus Heresy vehicle upgrade sprue, things like the smoke launchers, the cupola ring, the crew, the pintle mounted weapon, and things like the Eye of Terror on the front there. The crew member is made from, I believe, Horus Heresy, Sons of Horus resin torso, and a Mark VII helmet which I trimmed the um, crest back and added some studs to turn into a Mark V style helmet. The vehicle was painted in the same style as the rest of my Sons of Horus using a Cabalite, Sybarite and then Gorse Blaster Green um, trio or a triad and then weathered back with Word Bearers Red and Gorse Blaster on the chipping. I used a lot of black on these vehicles as well as a secondary colour, because black's used as a secondary colour for the Sons of Horus, most notably by units such as the Justarian Terminators. I then went a little bit crazy with some of the Sons of Horus decals which I'd got at about the same time as the tank. Uh, this tank overall um, is a couple of days work to, to put together, and then another couple of days worth of work to paint. I have a second version of this tank uh, painted up into my Imperial Fists, which we'll see eventually. And um, unfortunately, the assault ramp doesn't open. Uh, I've never really been a big fan of having the assault ramps openable on my tanks. Um, you can't really see inside them anyway, even when you have it done. And it just makes painting a little bit easier, in my opinion. Next up we have the Spartan Assault Tank Nemesis. This was the first Spartan that I built um, with the release of 2nd edition and unfortunately the commander has lost his little data pad which I'll need to get one of the others from one of the other sprues and uh, paint it up and fix it there. A little annoying, I'd only just noticed that that was missing. Again, really heavy on the decals, lots of last cannons for this bad boy and a really heavy application of Forge World weathering powders. The helmet for the commander is taken from the Mark IV set, um, the sergeant's helmet. Actually that, yeah I believe it is, it's, and, and so is his torso. Um, Mark IV armor was one of the most common forms of armor for the Sons of Horus, Horus diverting massive supplies of it to his legion above anyone else. And I think it fits a little bit more than just Mark II, um, which at this point would have been phased out. There wasn't any uh, attachment, as it were, to the armor at this point. 
that's a very 40k thing that their armor is treated as a, as a relic to to the heresy marines um, their armor is equipment and nothing more so for these guys getting the latest armor getting the best stuff um, especially for a frontline combat tank like the Spartan would have been really important especially for a commander of such a prestigious vehicle now this vehicle normally will tra travel around with um, you know, either a, a unit of veterans inside it or uh, a unit of terminators as the, uh, the previous land raider would also travel with a unit of terminators inside it um, I love tanks. I love these tanks. I love the style of these tanks. And I think this tank being a dual kit is really clever. Now we have a squadron of Vindicator assault tanks. These using the 40k variants rather than the 30k Dimos variants. Again, to represent the under-equipped nature of the 228th three tanks, a squadron leader indicated here with a black stripe down the middle, something that's not too in your face, wouldn't be too obvious, but you know, would be noticeable to the forces that be. I also went heavy on the Sons of Horus decals on the gun shields, and I was inspired by things like ancient Greek Tyrene boats, where you'd see them with the, with the eyes painted on the side of them. Heavy on the weathering, as always, and I don't like the shell-loading gumph that sits on the back of these, so I left it off of them. Uh, in fact, most of these were recovered off of eBay, um, along with a lot of the tanks that were in this army, and each one is slightly different. Decals in different places, the weathering slightly different, battle damage is slightly different. And the only real regret I have, uh, other than the fact that one of them has a loose gun shield that can move up and down and I can't seem to get it to stay in place, uh, is that it uh, is that I didn't remove the Imperialis off the front. So, a lot of trader forces still wore their uh, Imperial Eagles, like their Aquilas, because those were honorific signs of, you know, awards given to them during the Great Crusade, symbols of veterancy. Uh, the Palantine Aquila being a specific one for the Empress Children. But the Imperialis, the Winged Skull, is a symbol of the Loyalists. So maybe these vehicles were captured from Loyalists. Maybe it's uh, a distraction technique, you know, making them stop for a second because they're thinking, am I firing on friendly forces? Um, or it could just be that I didn't think about removing them when I was working on them. Now this last tank's a little annoying um, because the decals didn't react how the other decals reacted for some reason. Now normally I would put a gloss varnish layer down, uh, let it dry, put the decal over the top and then use some solvent like Microsol to smooth them down and get rid of the, uh, the outer edge. For some reason this just made all of the decals glow. Um, so I had to go kind of messy with some washes over the top to try and dull them down. That doesn't look great on this last one, but it's a filthy battle tank, so it's not a huge problem. I'm very happy with the lenses on a lot of these vehicles. Um, my lens work has got a lot worse recently. It used to be quite good, and I, I'm really struggling nowadays with it, which is a little disappointing, but it comes with certain, you know, with age. Next up, once the walls have been battered down, it's time for the land speeders to take advantage. Racing in and hitting primary targets, covering extraction teams. A unit of Proteus land speeders. These using the classic uh, 40k speeder, which is just a Proteus speeder with an armoured front end on it. I got a couple of these really cheap from the old Conquest magazine. And then a third one I picked up off eBay, I think. I wanted these because they're not quite as advanced as a Javelin, and they were a lot cheaper than the Proteus, which unfortunately is a massively overcosted kit for what it is. Heavy bolters and missile launchers. The launchers are actually printed, and they are from a Contemptor proxy. And all of the kits, uh, sorry, the crew are made from uh, 3D printed torsos or 
heresy appropriate torsos and helmets. Uh, lots of 3D printed bits in there. Uh, one of my favourite bits is actually there's a shoulder pad which should have had studs but it inverted the model. So instead of having the studs it actually carved like a uh, golf ball style texture in there. And if I can find that file again um, I'm going to print a load of them out because I think it would look really good on Death Guard. Uh, other than that all heavy bolters all the time a nice cheeky Volkite uh, Castiferum Dreadnought cannon on one of their bases and then even one of them is damaged it's got the fender slightly hanging off to show that maybe it's had a bit of a bump and again the squadron leader gold tips on the wing tips and a black fender and a nice big Eye of Terror decal in the front just to indicate you know who's in charge and leading the squadron um, not much else to say about these guys really Let's see what's next. Next up, some Spartha assault bikes, uh, attack bikes, sorry, with uh, auto cannons. Now, these were uh, an option that isn't in, uh, in the army list, but we don't currently have models for it. We've never had models for them with assault, yeah, with uh, assault cannons, auto cannons, sorry. Um, these were originally going to be for an Empress Children army, and they got painted up, and I hated them, so I stripped them and started again. Um, the auto cannons come from the old Cadian heavy weapons team and are just basically rested on the bars. Um, yeah, again, the crew, uh, the legs are trimmed down to make them look a bit more like Mark IV legs, uh, with the knee pads squared off and studs added. Torsos are mostly things like Mark III, um, with a smattering of different heads in there. Um, there's not a lot really I've done or can do to these guys to make them more heresy. But I think I've done enough to make them pass at a glance. Throwing in the odd Anvilus pattern uh, pack pack in there as well. Uh, and lots of Mark III heads. I like them as a unit. They look good. Um, they're definitely unique. And I'd definitely like to add something more to this. Uh, maybe another unit of these guys. Maybe a unit of regular bikes. Um, hopefully maybe we'll get some plastic outriders. Maybe I'll order a load of uh, Chaos Bikers and use those instead. Uh, I went heavy on things like top knots on these guys because that's something that shows up in a lot of the artwork as well for the Sons of Horus. But finding suitable top knots has actually been quite difficult. A lot of the kits that came with top knots have been discontinued, which is a little annoying. Um, but there are a few good kits out there still with them. Um, other than that, third-party sites now have them, so there's that. Now leading this force would be a Centurion on a bike, and sometimes, you know, he, he decides, in fact, he'd actually roll around in his Command Rhino. So the Damocles Command Rhino here, it's a Mars pattern Rhino again, and it's made kitbashed from a Razorback. And I took the Razorback turret, and instead of putting the weapons in there, I just stuffed it full of weird optical um, like equipment, bits from all sorts of different kits, anything that looked technical, I stuffed together, and I stuffed into this turret. And actually, the Razorback whole top panel is removable, and I've got another spare Rhino top panel that I can slot in there, so I can just run this as a regular Rhino if I want to. Capullo's removable as well, so I can swap it out for a blank one if I don't want to give it a multi-melter. Um, other than that, it's just a command rhino. Um, I didn't go too heavy on the decals on this one because I didn't have any at the time. I just had a few numbers. Um, you know, just so this is this is rhino number ten. I've got uh, nine and seven, I believe, or nine and eight. Sorry, um, on the other two rhinos in the force. The bike commander is just a regular Chaos Biker, or regular biker, sorry, with parts from things like the Mark III kit. Um, he's actually got an Emperor's Children, um, Palantine Blade head, I think it is. And I believe the cloak comes from the Eldar Wraith Lord kit. Um, one of the old Anvilus backpacks, and just some other, you know, bits here and there, just to make him look more interesting. And then a nice leaning pose to make it look like he's maybe taking a corner or letting his claw scrape along the floor in anticipation of, of the fight. 
And then finally, we. <coughs> you, you can't have speed without some punch behind it. And here we have my Storm Lord. Uh, at the time, was I think believe the biggest the biggest model I've ever made. Uh, it is the Bane Blade Storm Lord, um, and I just added some extra bits to it from the Marine kits, such as smoke launchers, a hunter killer missile, some spikes, some spotlights, some trophies, and then I used the Sergeant Centus, uh, something like that. It's the old Ultramarines. Mark III special character, I can't remember his name. It's sent something, Centurus or something like that. I'm too old. Um, I've given him the arm from the Masters of the Chapter. There is a uh, Masters of the Chapter model, actually the one with the, the sword and shield in the first video. Uh, he's actually holding his Mark III helmet and it's in a power fist, so I gave that to this guy instead um, because I think it just looks kind of cool. Uh, yeah, uh, he's got trophies on there from all of the Loyalist Legions and the Dark Angels. Um, I didn't opt to put the uh, Sponsons on because in first edition when I made this, you didn't actually have to have uh, side Sponsons for this tank. Uh, now you do, unfortunately. Uh, which is a bit annoying because I think they ruin the silhouette of this tank. And then the mud guards at the front, which are all bent up, uh, are made from a sliced up tin can. Uh, made to look a bit more realistic, a bit more worn. Uh, you see it a lot in a lot of the um, model tank sort of community. Other than that, I just went really heavy with the Forge World uh, weathering powders on this one. Um, there isn't much else to say that I haven't said in everything else. So yeah, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you want to see more, let me know. If you don't, let me know. Um, thank you very much, guys. Thank you to Cool Dog for helping me build the uh, the shelves yesterday. Uh, I now have somewhere I can actually film these tanks because I couldn't fit them into my light box, uh, and I have room to store some stuff as well. Um, and all the lovely comments from everyone. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, I'm just hit, I'm, I'm in a lot of pain at the moment. I've doubt I've hurt my foot, um, and I just can't walk. Basically, I'm just constantly in pain. Um, other than that, <clears throat> thank you very much for watching. If you want to support the channel, uh, like, comment, subscribe. And uh, if you're looking at picking up models in the UK, you can always go to Element Games and use code Jam Seven Three Seven at checkout to double your reward points. Um, I got nothing else other than that, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.